Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Armin and in this video, I would like to teach you how to prepare a propeller for CFD analysis. In the first section, I'm going to teach you how to prepare rotary and stationary domains. You see a 9450 clockwise propeller, which everyone can download from websites. At the end of this video, you will see a propeller with two domains for CFD analysis. Also, I will teach you how to set a periodic boundary condition to reduce computational costs. In the second section, I will teach you how to set a proper mesh in the watertight workflow for this model. Okay, let's get started. To start, I will choose Fluent with Fluent Meshing Toolbox. Then I'm going to import propeller geometry. I will do all the steps in Space Claim. By right clicking on the geometry, you can select Space Claim. Okay, this is the propeller in ANSI's Space Claim. First, I need to clean up the geometry and remove the extra parts. The propeller consists of four parts. We don't need screw of hub, so I'm gonna delete it. Now, we have three parts, and I'm going to combine them. I'm gonna select three parts of propeller and then click on Combine. As you see, we have a union component. So I'm gonna press the escape key to exit from the combine operator. I recommend you delete components in the structure tree. There are several extra edges on the geometry. We should delete them for simplicity. I'm gonna click on extra edges and edges will be deleted automatically. Now, I want to fill the hole in the hub of propeller. So I'm gonna select the hole then click on fill. Okay, propeller is ready for creating domains. I'm gonna change the name of solid to propeller. Of course, it's not mandatory. Okay. We need two domains, a rotary domain for the propeller and a stationary domain for wave propagation. First, I'm going to create the rotary domain. So I'm going to select enclosure, then I'm going to select propeller. The rotary domain is a cylinder. I can change the direction of cylinder in this way. The domain should be the size of the propeller as much as possible. I chose the distance of 4 mm so there would be no problem creating the mesh. As you see, now we have two components. We don't need propeller, so I'm gonna delete it. Like last time. I'm gonna delete the component and change the name of the solid to rotary. The propeller is subtracted from the rotary domain. We can see it in the section view. Now I want to create a stationary domain. So I'm gonna click on enclosure again and select the rotary domain. The diameter of the domain should be more than five times of the propeller and the domain length should be 10 times larger. Three domains have been created. I have to delete the propeller domain. I 
I am going to remove the components. We must have only two domains. As you see, the rotary domain is subtracted from the stationary. In section 3, I'm going to name the boundary conditions. All outer surfaces are environment, and I name it outlet. Now I'm going to hide the stationary domain. Surface of the propeller is wall conditions, so I need it for setting boundary conditions. We can hide surfaces in this way. I'm gonna select the propeller wall and name it propeller. I want to model half of the geometry, so I have to split and delete half of it. The plane is redundant, and I can delete it. This is not mandatory. I can use symmetry boundary condition for stationary domain. So I'm gonna name it symmetry. We cannot use symmetry for propeller. Periodic boundary condition needs two reference planes. So I'm going to split two faces on the propeller route. Two planes must be equal. So I'm going to specify 50%. Now we have two identical faces. I have to specify by name two sides to specify the boundary conditions. In the end, we must select share topology. Now the two domains are connected and the mesh is also conformal. Thank you for watching.